This episode of Bullet Heaven was made possible by Durnick. Deine stillenden Schwingen sind nun unsere letzte Hoffnung. The last five years or so have been a really good time to be a Dreamcast player that loves them some shmups. That little white box knows how to have a good time so long after its best before date. Several games have seen release to the Dreamcast since 2009, most of which are of the shooting variety and many of which we've taken a look at in Series 5 of Bullet Heaven HD. Right in the middle of it all, Red Spot Games and Duranik join the fray with their own shooting game, and is this one a doozy? Sturmwind is a side-scrolling shooting game that sets itself apart from NG dev team and Hugh Cast's efforts with a wide assortment of interesting features and alternate influences. Let's take a closer look. Sturmwind has a very different flavor to it than any other shooting game on the Dreamcast. There's very little doubt that this is a European release, with many so-called Euro shmup accents and flourishes that distinguish it from the many, many Japanese releases we've taken a look at so far. Slow, methodical eight-way movement resides at the core of the controls here. The game progression in Sturmwind isn't meant to be especially manic. Instead, choosing wisely between one of three weapon types takes center stage rather than fast, twitchy attack strategies or bullet-held dodging technique. The weaponry in Sturmwind is very similar to Konami's Axele, which we took a look at in Episode 11 of Bullet Heaven all the way back in Series 1. Players can choose differently between the three different weapons using the R trigger, and each has its strengths and weaknesses which works better or worse in specific situations. The Blue Licked Blitz laser has a twin arcing pattern that's good for taking sweeping enemy waves out fairly efficiently. The Green Rudel Cannon is a powerful directed attack that's great for attacking head-on, and the Red Nordwest Gun has a twin 170 degree arc that sweeps from back to forward as long as the gun is engaged and will sweep back when it is released, great for taking out enemies surrounding your ship. That's where the weapon difference from Axelay ends, as all of these weapons have rear-firing modes, toggled by the L-Trigger. All of these attacks are also upgradable with weapon pickups that activate when the 1000 point bonuses that come from defeating your opposition are shot. These can be cycled through to upgrade different weapons, but only when that weapon is selected. Since each weapon has a different attack strength, it will take a shorter or longer time to cycle through depending on which weapon is selected. This makes things pretty obtuse, since cycling the power up to what you need then switching to that weapon is a bit of a chore with the default setup. For heavier damage, in addition to an available screen clearing bomb attack, all of the weapons in Sturmwind have a chargeable super attack that causes heavy damage to the enemies that they're fired at. There are two levels to these attacks, but care should be taken as holding the charge button for too long overheats the selected weapon and damage will be taken as a result. Just like in Axelay, any time damage is sustained while any weapon is engaged, it will be destroyed at which point the next weapon is auto-cycled to. Collecting a power-up corresponding to the lost weapons reactivates them, but when all three read out, you lose a life. Thankfully, there are all kinds of bomber and one-up pickups throughout the game as well to make things a bit easier as you get through. Regardless of the clunky power-up system, all of these mechanics work fairly well and Sturmwind is pretty fun as a result. Good thing, too, since there are a total of 16 stages to blast through in 7 areas, some short, others long, and all with some kind of crazy boss to destroy. There is also an arcade mode in which a selection of 7 stages are played through like your typical Japanese-style shooting game, which makes for a much shorter playthrough than the normal mode. Multiple difficulty levels are also available for players of all skill types, though Sturmwind on the whole feels fairly forgiving, great for novices. There are even challenges with trophies attached to unlock some pretty cool bonuses. There are a few problems though. Firstly, power-ups that are dropped by enemies on the left-hand side of the screen are often only visible for all of about a half a second and are impossible to collect as a result. Additionally, when a player loses a life, the screen goes dark as if a checkpoint is being accessed. However, upon respawn, you'll end up exactly where you were when you died. This is a totally pointless feature. If you're going to respawn in the exact same spot anyway, a screen cut just isn't needed. 
On a technical level, we had a lot of difficulty having Sturmwind load at very specific points on a US system, but fine beyond those specific sectors. On a Japanese console, however, there were zero issues. With many revisions to the Dreamcast in three different regions, it seems as if there could be very slight incompatibility issues despite being region free. There are also some moderate load times here too, but given the huge amount of 2D animation in Sturmwind, that's pretty much a given. It's not too bad though, with only about 10 seconds between each stage required to load the next one. Scoring in Sturmwind takes an interesting approach to be sure, but maybe not especially great. Obviously, enemy destruction lies at the core of the scoring in Sturmwind, but multipliers are also a pretty big factor in getting as high a score as possible. If a complete wave of enemies is destroyed, the words wave bonus will appear on screen. This is where things take a turn for the cheesy, as these letters need to be shot and destroyed to activate stars, which enables a base point multiplier depending on how many have been collected. 7 stars is a 7x multiplier, for example. In addition, 1000 point pickups are often available throughout each stage, but care should be taken in the case of these bonuses, as shooting them changes them into weapon power-ups that yield exactly nothing in terms of score. There are also harder to find 2500 point pickups too, and your multiplier applies to these as well. At the end of each stage, a breakdown of the stage's stats are displayed, including the amount of stars collected, weapon usage, accumulated score, and so forth for that particular stage in relation to the total. All in all, the scoring in Sturmwind is pretty low key, but there are leaderboards that are accessible online, and scores can be posted using a numeric code. Nifty. The presentation in Sturmwind is both amazing and kind of iffy at the same time. There's no question that there's a lot of cool effects and great tunes throughout the game, but there are frequently times that something feels a bit… off. Visually, Sturmwind is pretty stunning. The 2D visuals at work here are the stuff of legends, despite being almost 100% pre-rendered CG sprites. The backgrounds in particular have some of the best color and shine we've seen in a 2D shooting game, bar none. Paired with all kinds of super smooth animation, imaginative settings, and one of the coolest looking bomb attacks ever, Sturmwind is a visual powerhouse. There are even some vertizontal stages, in which the game scrolls horizontally but has a top-down perspective. As great as the visuals are, the mechanical design of the Sturmwind ship itself looks a little on the plain side. Some of the concept art for the ships looked way cooler than the final design in our opinion, but it still works fairly well. Almost all of the enemy design is top notch too, but we didn't care much for the stuff like the derpy looking pufferfish boss or the googly eyed walking tank. The opening FMV movie is also a little on the blurry side, but this is 15 year old hardware after all. Also, what's with no title screen? That crazy lizard is cool and all, but a dedicated Sturmwind title screen would have been much more fitting. The music is strong, but also a slightly mixed bag. There's a lot of awesome Nero techno in here, but also chiptune style tracks that, while fairly decent, maybe don't fit the bill in Sturmwind. These chiptune style tracks also sound a lot like the Commodore 64 sound engine, which we sorta of don't like as much as, say, the NES or TurboGrafx-16's output. Regardless, there's a pretty big fanbase out there for C64 synth, and these tracks will surely hit all the right notes for them. On the topic of sound, we did notice that, like a lot of Dreamcast games, the sound output in Sturmwind is heavily overdriven and peaks out a lot, causing distortion as a result. Some of the sound effects are just a little on the typical side as well, with some samples having been seen in, well, the entire history of explosions on TV and cinema. All of the voice samples in Sturmwind are also in German, which is no surprise seeing as it was made in Germany. But with no subtitle options, players might be in the dark as to what exactly is going on. With my extremely limited German repertoire, I would have actually had a better time understanding it if it were voice in Japanese. Thankfully, all of the UI menus and even the manual in Sturmwind, with the exception of the names of the missions and weapons, are in English, and easy translation work is more than a doable task if players really want to know what some of the German stuff actually says. The addition of unlockable features is also a nice touch. Eagle-eyed players will also spot all kinds of easter eggs throughout the game as well, which is pretty great. So Sturmwind has good gameplay despite clunky control mechanics, simple scoring, and some fantastic visuals and fairly good sound. But how does it stack up? Let's take a look.
Stormwind's controls are pretty clunky when it comes to powering up your weapons. Thankfully, the movement rate is solid and everything else feels fairly intuitive. Sturmwind is a pretty forgiving game and minimal practice should see players through the game well. Sturmwind is a great game for novices, and multiple difficulties allow veterans to test themselves. With 16 stages to the main game, there's a lot to play here. The addition of an arcade mode and online leaderboards for both add extra layers of replayability. Some of the finest 2D visuals in shooting games are yours to behold in this game. Some of the UI in game like the wave bonus and get ready look a little on the 90s cheesy side though. The OST is totally listenable, but sometimes might not fit the bill here. Overdriven sound is also a slight issue. The all German audio with no subtitles may lose some players trying to figure out what's being said. It's pretty clear that the horizontal stages of Axley are of heavy inspiration in Sturmwind. Despite this, all of the mechanics get blended into a unique experience that feels familiar as well. Fans of Axley will definitely dig Duranix's shooting entry on the Sega Dreamcast. Those looking for a change of pace from the super heavy R-Type and Last Resort inspired shmups from NG Dev Team and QCast should also take a good hard look at Sturmwind as well. In the end, Sturmwind gets a 4.25 out of 5. You can get a copy of Sturmwind direct from Red Spot Games' website for about 35 euro. Not only is it a fun game, its excellent manual and disc production looks amazing in any Dreamcast library. If you want a bit more from your Sturmwind experience, the Collector's Edition comes with an art book, a full-color 3D printed model, and a soundtrack disc for 70 euro. All awesome. Win 170 degree art that sweets from blah 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 bl